Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike, and in the game Bioshock Infinite, Columbia is a floating city nestled effortlessly in the clouds. This got me thinking, what if Columbia was real? Columbia began as a US commissioned symbol of American ideals, built in 1893. It was designed with American and religious fundamentalism in mind, which wouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who's visited the city. But why was the city brought into the clouds and what technology would have been needed to make it possible? There's no denying that building a city in the sky comes with some pretty significant drawbacks. The first is getting to and from the city. I get the place is meant to be exclusive, but come on, it's hard to deny this is pretty extreme. The idea of a city built in the sky can only be conceived by people with their heads in the clouds. Anyways, what they came up with is a spherical rocket chair that hurls people up into the city. Keep this in mind, this all takes place 30 years before the first ever rocket even launched. The journey into Columbia involves the rocket traveling about 18,000 feet in only about 15 seconds. At that speed, the average velocity would be about 366 meters per second, or about 7% faster than the speed of sound. During flight, the rocket would accelerate upwards at about 50 meters per second squared, and the crew would experience around 6 g-forces. At that rate, most people would pass out, but if you didn't pass out, you would get pretty cold. Some would even say freezing, because at 5,500 meters, the air temperature is only around negative 16.7 degrees Celsius. Not only that, but the air density is only about 55% is that on the surface, so suffocation is a serious problem for newcomers. Wind speed is another serious problem for Columbia. Wind at higher altitudes are faster and more consistent than what is seen on the surface. This wind would send Columbia veering in unintentional directions while also sterilizing the surface of anyone caught outside. But Columbia seems different. People walk the streets and the town seems like a totally normal city, where you'd expect to see people layered with arctic clothing and breathing devices holding onto the railings with dear life. You see people enjoying a manufactured beach. Somehow or some way, Columbia has managed to replicate surface life five and a half thousand kilometers in the sky. This isn't to say it's impossible, however. Commercial airliners have a cruising altitude three times higher than that of even Columbia. But back in 1912, when Booker arrives at the city, such technology was still a bit ways off. Without a dome structure to trap oxygen-rich warm air, Columbia would have some serious trouble providing an outdoor environment seen in the game. A city in the sky sounds completely mythical, but the idea has been thrown around when talking about Venus, the second planet from the sun. This planet has a very dense, thick cloud base with the proper elemental makeup that could support a floating city. It just so happens that the dense carbon dioxide atmosphere that turns the planet's surface into a pressure cooker is exactly the same composition that allows a breathable air mixture to float. NASA has even flirted with the idea and developed a concept called the High Altitude Venus Operational Concept, or HAVOC. Although the concept is still just an idea, it's nice to see people like NASA actually consider it. But back to Columbia. Earth doesn't have an atmosphere that could support such a floating city in the same way Venus would. You would need elements such as helium or hydrogen to allow a balloon to take the city into the sky. In the game, a quantum levitation technology is what keeps the city in the sky. But without getting into the gritty details of how quantum levitation works, it's safe to say that at the scale of Columbia, such technology is only a dream. But don't take my word for it, you can even see air balloons under certain parts of the city. In my previous video about Rapture, I noted that the city has a few million people. This is completely wrong. According to the books, Rapture only had about 15,000 residents. Without making too many assumptions here, let's just take a look at a few real-life buildings and see what it would take to get them to float. So different gases have different properties. Helium has the best safety to buoyancy ratio of all the gases and would provide the city with the greatest buoyancy per volume. The only element more buoyant than helium would be hydrogen, but we all know how that would probably turn out. To lift something like the Freedom Tower, it would require upwards of 270 million kilograms of helium. To put that into perspective, that's about 250 times more volume than the Hindenburg, and that doesn't even account for the mass of the 400 million cubic meter sized gigantic balloon designed to withstand the expanding pressure at such a high elevation. In today's society, no one really ever has to worry about something falling out of the sky and killing them. I mean, it happens sometimes, but the chances are pretty microscopic. But in a world where there are entire cities floating in the clouds, the situation becomes a little more likely and equally terrifying. Would you want to live in a floating city like Columbia? Let me know why in the comments down below, and I'll be picking a winner for a PC version of Bioshock Infinite. Anyways guys, this was just a quick look at Columbia from the Bioshock series. This has been Mike for Space Pack, and thanks for watching.